Good afternoon, friends and family, and welcome to another episode of the E30 M3 S54 behind me. My name is Frank from Garageaholic, and if you haven't subscribed, please just do it already, will ya? Just do it. Today we're gonna to be doing a very compartmentalized video of the S54 engine. We're gonna be finishing up the front end, getting those belts installed, and we're also going to be working on the radiator and the oil cooler installation and getting those oil cooler lines installed from the cooler to the S54. Guys, thanks for watching and please. Okay, so we've got all of our S54 belt components. We've got our compressor belt. We've got our um, uh, accessory belt. We've got our tensioners with all of our hardware ready to go, all queued up. Our compressor with our new bracket. We've got um, basically everything to go, everything in order to install onto this block, onto this front end. As you can see, we've done a lot here. Um, we've got our alternator on, we've got our power steering pump on, and I will show you the top end installation right now. So this is the part that we were waiting on. It's a very specific double threaded part that goes into the, uh, the cylinder head. Um, we just need to clean up that stuff, but basically that, that, that part uh, threads onto the cylinder head and there's a different thread on the top side that goes into the seal that you have to put on after you put the valve cover on. So what we're doing is we're cleaning up uh, all that stuff and we are going to uh, final install this valve cover, um, which I've been looking forward to for quite a while. Um, this part couldn't be fabricated, unfortunately, but that's okay. We just needed to buy it. And uh, you can see we're slowly putting on all of the brand new seals. And we just put the carbon fiber cover on just for fun. But we do need to put the harness on and, of course, the injectors and all that stuff. So uh, there we go. Injectors are getting installed right now. Just one after the other. Just plops right in to kind of click in, which is a nice satisfying click. And we'll leave those open. And now we're just working on, you know, the rest of the engine install. So we got the uh, coolant line that's going from the water pump uh, back to the heater core. So we've got to put that on. And then we've got our uh, renowned uh, intake and uh, individual throttle bodies. We got to put them on. And uh, then we have another coolant line. That's our return coolant line from the heater core. And that goes back. Now that we've got the top end installed and we've got the throttle bodies on and the valve cover on, now I want to focus on getting the belts on. And in order to do that, we've got to install our tensioners. This is our accessory belt tensioner. It is a hydraulic tensioner. We've got all of our hardware queued up and ready to, to just put on and torque. To tension it, all you do is take the six millimeter and tighten it and it moves the, um, the hydraulic tensioner down and it allows you to slip the belt on right over this um, bearing. Uh, we do need to put the coolant pump uh, pulley on. So now we're just doing a quick time lapse of installing this whole pulley tensioner system. So we had to take the uh, idler off to tighten them up and then we put the, the, the pulley back on there. So before I button this up, I wanted you to see exactly how this tensioner works. Everything is tightened up and all you need to do is take your eight millimeter, put it in. Okay, so now it's time to fit the radiator in. And this is gonna be a little bit tricky because I removed the two normal E30 uh, uh, radiator holders. And the reason being is because this CSF radiator here actually has the CSF oil cooler also installed. And that actually installs underneath just like this, kind of fits right inside of these little slots, just like that. Um, and then it screws on. So both these come as a unit and as a result, you need to make sure that you have the right mounting accommodations. And here I've got, I mean, obviously there's mounting on the bottom here. There's these rubber, gr um, rubber grommets that kind of slip inside of there. And then you kind of hold it in place with a little, little cradle. Let me show you the cradle. So here is the cradle. And this cradle literally sits just like that. So you're just resting the radiator on these things. And then you have two on the bottom and then on the top, you're gonna have to hold them hold it together with these guys onto the uh, core support. So it's being held in by four locations and it's being held in relatively firmly. The problem is, is that I need to have a custom location for this guy because there was no E30 spot, or at least not on the M3, um, to install it. So now I need to uh, identify exactly where that's going to be and make a bracket 
that this uh, installs on and then, uh, and then get those two brackets installed on each side of the frame rails and then I'm good to uh, throw this guy in. So let's, geez, the focus, sorry about the focus guys. So now I need to get this radiator installed and figure out where it's gonna sit so that I know where my brackets need to be. All right, so first things first, we wanna get the oil cooler installed and there's these little hooks that the oil cooler installs on and, uh, and then you use these M6 bolts here that kind of thread into the nut cert. That kind of mates one to the other. So we'll loosely install that one on that side and then we'll get this one into position and loosely install this one. Now the key here is to install this from the bottom up now since we've got the oil cooler in the mix the, uh, we got to install it from the bottom up. So if you ever did want to remove this whole setup or remove the radiator, you need to unscrew the radiator from the oil cooler and then take the radiator out from the top. Here, we're just gonna install the whole thing as one unit. Let's see what this thing looks like. <clears throat> so this is essentially what it looks like. So being very, very careful, we want to make sure that we install this from the bottom up. I've got my blue cover here. You always want to make sure you're protecting these fins. And uh, that's probably a good location. Let me see what it looks like on the top here. Okay, not bad. I think overall what I really need to do here is, uh, is find a way to prop this up into its final location. So I might just bring the car down a little bit and then use like a jack stand or some wood planks or whatever to keep this exactly where it needs to be. And then I'm gonna end up working a little bit on my back in order to find the location of where these brackets need to be. Let's take a look and see what it looks like here. So definitely pretty tight in there for a fan. Um, I'm thinking that this actually can be removed yeah, so that might actually afford me a little bit more room than I thought. The fan might end up living right in here. Um, <clears throat> and then underneath, let's see where our mounts are going to go. Well, this is one right here. All right, so we got one there. It's going to have one of these guys. All right, so that's going to sit like that. Now I just need to make a bracket that allows it to sit in that exact location. So that's not going to be that difficult to do. It's just something we just need to make the accommodations for. And the same thing on the other side. The other side is just as simple. See it right there? So once we get these two brackets installed, I think we'll be in good shape to, uh, to start routing our, our lines, which <clears throat> this is gonna be tricky because the oil pan is gonna be in the way, but let's, we'll have to face that fact when we get to it. It is close, but it fits. Look at that, huh? It's like four mils, maybe? Four mils of spacing. Once this is installed, I think this is gonna be good. So these two lines are then gonna snake up to, which is right here. So these two lines are gonna go out to 45s, and those are gonna go down to those two lines that are down there. So <clears throat> the lines for the oil cooler are relatively straightforward. We'll end up doing those next, but we gotta get this radiator installed and in its final position before we start doing that because the lengths of those, of those lines are really determined by the position of the radiator and therefore the oil cooler. So we got the radiator installed. Um, I know I skipped a couple of steps, but I'll show you what I did. We did get some blue protective tape on the top surfaces just to make sure that we're not marring any surfaces while we're, while we're doing this. This guy here uh, is installed with a couple of M6 bolts now on the, up on the top side. I welded a couple of aluminum brackets on there, one on that side, one on that side. I also wanted to explain that the next thing that we're gonna do here is, of course, the oil filter lines, now the uh, oil cooler lines, rather. These are AN10 lines, this is a pair here, and that goes to this pair here. And that actually does uh, fit, and it does not interfere, the 90 degrees does not interfere with the oil pan. Uh, installing these is very straightforward, and there is an order of installation that you need to, to do when, when doing this, so we need to uh, be careful not to put them in backwards, or else air will get trapped in the system. So here's what we've got. We've got an AN10 line. I've got a 45 on one side and I got a 90. And I got a 90 on this side and a 45 on this side. And the reason being is that's the perfect AN10 fittings and the perfect length in order to get this thing installed. So I did one line and I did the half of the other line, but I want to explain to you how uh, 
AN lines uh, typically should be assembled and installed. I know there's tons of videos out there, but I would like to take just two minutes and explain to you really quick on how I do it. Let's install this one first, and then I'll show you, after installing half of the second one, how we're gonna get that last fourth fitting on. So there really is no order of operations for installation once you've assembled it, but the key here is that you clock these correctly when you're assembling them, and that really is so, so important. This one here is a 45, and it's getting clocked just like that to clear the alternator. So we're going to tighten that one up just moderately. We don't have to go crazy, right? And on the bottom side, that I will install that right up here. And let me just get a couple of threads on there. The more threads you screw on, the more clearance you get uh, to, the, to the actual oil pan. And that's just my problem, right? That's not everybody's problem. Not everybody's using this oil pan. Not everybody's using this setup, right? So this is just my problem that I'm trying to overcome. So I've got this installed. And you can see here the amount of curve and play that I've got. So I've got a lot of good play, a lot of curve. It's not interfering with the, with the, uh, with the coolant, right? So this is gonna be a nice straight shot, which is gonna be great. And now I have to do the other one. The other one is also gonna be a 45 here, and it's gonna come down, and it, is going to sneak a little bit slight different way. As you can see here, it's on the bottom side. Let me explain that. This is the pressure side. This is coming out. Oil is coming out of here, and it's gonna go into the bottom. It needs to go into the bottom because it's pushing oil through, which means that it's pushing the air out through the oil uh, uh, cooler and up through here. So air always rises, so you want the air to start at the bottom and end on the top so it gets bled out of the system appropriately. So that's the correct way to do this. Let me install the bottom side of this and we'll show you how we terminate at the top up here and get the right size, the right length, and the right clocking. <clears throat> I've already pre-terminated one side here. This is my 90 degree side that installs on the oil cooler. And I've got a lot of length here, so I'm gonna snake that up and I'm gonna figure out exactly where and how to, how, how to clock that piece. So let's just get this pushed up first and let's get this guy installed. Bottom installed and I've got this clocked correctly the way I want. I'm obviously gonna need to um, find a better way to hold and harness these tubes, but that's okay. You can see here, let me get further out away, that I kinda want this to swing in this direction and I want it to look like that. So the important thing is, is that <clears throat> I want to take this off. And this guy is going to end up getting threaded onto there. But this guy is probably going to be looking something like that. So I want to mark with tape exactly where I need to cut this line. So I'm going to use some tape and I'm going to mark it and I'm going to cut it. So I felt that it was appropriate to do a voiceover for this. So I marked with red tape. And the reason you're doing that is that when you cut the lines with a cutoff wheel, the out, outer braid does not fray off. And that plays a really big role when you end up, um, see, you can see there, it plays a really big role when you end up installing the line into the fitting. So we have this thing called Cool Tools. Um, it's a fitting installer. You put the fitting inside of the little uh, capsule there and you use your spacers appropriately. Um, and then I put it into my jaw horse vise. So this is a really, really cool tool because, well, believe it, it is a cool tool. Uh, I have AN10, AN8, and AN6. So this is a nice set that I bought for 100 bucks, and it makes installation of these braided lines into those fittings so much easier. So here I am just marking my depth so I know that when I'm installing it, that I know how deep I should go so that I can bottom out onto the fitting. So it was really easy. Just use the, the jaw horse to hold everything in place. And I know that I've gotten my depth and I check it now. You can see that that rubber hose is inside of that as much as you can go. Cleaned it up and now I'm actually marking off my clock, my clocking. So I, I using the red tape here to show exactly where on the 45 degree elbow I want that top face to be. And then I'm also putting the same red tape on not just the hose but also the fitting. And that plays an important role later. So I take the fitting off. And, um, and I put the whole thing back into the jaw horse. So I put them into my blue clamps there. And I take the hose with its fitting that I just put on and put it into the, uh, into the jaw horse clamp. And I'm having it face up just for ease of, un of understanding how you know, to line up the, two, the red 
red tape. I start taking the fitting and uh, threading it on. It's a very fine thread, so you can get a couple of threads on pretty easily. And I use my tool to start rotating and tightening everything down. And this is where the clocking comes into play. You can see the red tape is kind of rotating around, and it needs to line up exactly. See, so there's one more rotation there, so I need to line up exactly where where um, those tape line the tape lines line up. Another important thing is as I'm tightening it in, there's a tendency of the fitting inside to push the braided line back. And to have the tape on both the braided line and the fitting is really good for understanding if that braided line is pulling away. And you can see here that I've gotten everything basically set up here. There was no pulling away when I was tightening it in and everything is lined up. So technically when you reinstall this, you can reinstall on the bottom first and then we can reinstall on the top and you'll see that it will definitely fit really really nice and there's no issues no clocking problems or anything like that so then I just take the tape off and kind of just take another clamp here that I bought and just keep the lines nice and neat and tidy with respect to each other and we are done all right so just about everything is done here the lines are routed up down and around to the bottom down there I've got good clearance I also took the liberty of installing the AC compressor down there and, uh, and routing this line to where the condenser will eventually be, but I'm not going to install the condenser yet because I have a little bit of body work to do. I got a couple of uh, issues with the body work, so I have to fix that, repaint that before we, uh, we assemble. But everything looks good. Now let's take a look at the wiring harness. We've got a brand new factory uh, S54 wiring harness, uh, basically an S54 wiring harness for engine swap. So it's got your sport button, it's got your accelerator pedal, it's got your grounds and your powers, it's got your X6004 uh, here, it's got the OBD, the OBD connector, and of course it's got your X20, or I'm sorry, C101 is what it is for the E30. And so it's got basically everything we need, right? Coolant temperature sensor, oil temp, all that cool stuff, and we are going to uh, install that right now. Let's take this guy off. And let's lay the harness out where it's going to end up living. That's going to sit like that. This guy is going to fit. For now, I just want to lay everything in and just see how... Ah, see, this is good stuff. This, is, this protects the paint. Um, I just want to see how everything is going to kind of look. Um, I know where everything will belong. It's just a matter of making sure that it's all fit exactly where it needs to. And this is gonna take some time. So what we're gonna do is get back to this in the next episode where you'll see us install the wiring harness. And that way everything is gonna really start to come together in this engine bay if it hasn't already, you couldn't tell. But uh, thanks for watching guys and take it easy.